Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to do my second guest design team project for May May Made It. And I am absolutely in love with this stamp set. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. It was kind of reminiscent of when I was a little girl and used to play with paper dolls. There's so many things that you can do with this stamp set and I can't wait to share all of those things with you. For this project, I used uh, this Mamie Made It stamp set, which is called Ugly Sweater Weather. And what's great about this stamp set is that the sweater is actually separate from this little deer. So you can swap out that deer for anything that you want. So in fact, I also used this little penguin with all the Christmas lights around it, as well as this itty bitty little penguin with a little Christmas hat and Christmas belt on uh, to make a couple of other cards as well. So let me share with you guys the cards that I made and then I will share with you guys the process of how I made each different sweater design. So first of all, this little card here I made with just the May May Made It stamps from this sweater, ugly sweater set. And I stamped out the sweater, then I stamped out the little deer, then I stamped out this little uh, pattern. I don't know if you call it a snowflake or what, but I stamped that all over the sweater. And I also stamped out this little checkerboard border um, just at the bottom here. Although I thought about putting it around the cuffs, I decided just at the bottom that would be plenty of pattern on this really cute, ugly sweater. And then I colored it up with my Copic markers. And for the background, I wanted to keep it simple, but add some texture and some pattern. So I used some we are Memory Keepers Next Level Quilted Patterns for the embossing folders. For this one, I used this pattern here. And then for another one, I used the other one. But uh, And then I just used a little scrap. And inside, for the sentiment, I used one of the sentiments from the stamp set, Dawn We Now Our Ugly Sweater. And I just think that came out so cute. The next one I did was this one, and I just stamped out this tiny little penguin over and over in all different directions. And this is the quilted folder that I used for this little banner here. And I just used some pattern paper that I had in my stash that coordinated, I thought, pretty well with the colors that I used to Copic color this sweater. And for the inside, I had another scrap, so I used that in the background. And then I used a punch, uh, I think it's an old Martha Stewart one, to punch out this um, snowflake. And then for the sentiment, I used this Get Your Tacky On from the Ugly Sweater stamp set. I thought that came out very cute too. And this is actually one of my favorite Christmas color combinations. And then lastly, I did this one, and I used this little penguin with the Christmas lights tangled all around it, and I just had it peeking out over the bottom cuff of the sweater. And because I wanted the Christmas lights to take kind of center stage in terms of color, I colored all of these up with Copic markers in a rainbow of colors, and then I used glossy accents over top, and then just did a sweater kind of boucle looking uh, Copic coloring for the background of the sweater and just kept everything else monotone so that these Christmas lights would really pop. And then for the inside of this card, for the sentiment, I combined a couple of stamp sets. The sweater weather is from the May May Made It Ugly Sweater Weather, this stamp right here. And the Wishing You Mary is from this Hero Art Stampin' Cuts, it's Wishing You from here, and I left out the A, and then the Mary. And I really like how that was combined to make a sentiment that I thought would highlight the sweater, which I really like. If I saw a sweater like this in a store, I think I would buy it to wear. I'm just taking the stamp that is the sweater, outside drawn image of the sweater, and I'm inking it up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm using a Misty tool because I wanna make sure I can re-stamp it if necessary, which I do, because it's a little bit light in some of the kind of detailed areas. And you can get both the Misty tool and Memento Tuxedo Black ink also at May May Made It, just so you know. Now I'm taking the little deer stamp, and I'm gonna put that smack in the middle of this sweater. And I'm just using a little acrylic block for this one, just because for a small image like that, I thought I could just wing it. <laughs> I'm also using the acrylic block to add some extra pattern. Uh, this is also from the stamp set and I just thought 
I'm gonna go all out and make the sweater as tacky as possible. <laughs> so I'm having lots of fun doing this. I'm gonna stamp out these little uh, snowflake type stamps. They're really small, so really easy to get relatively crisp images with an acrylic block. And you'll see that I'm trying to position them all over in a kind of random pattern, but I didn't want it to get into the cuffs. So I made a quick little mask just with a little scrap of paper and I stamped out the collar portion and fussy cut around the just the base of it. And now I'm using just a little scrap of paper so that I don't stamp over the little checkerboard area. Um, and that makes it so that the pattern really goes just in the plain white areas. I'm using, you can see there, a little mask so that I don't overlap over the arm. Um, overlapping outside the image of the sweater is fine, but inside the actual uh, sweater itself, I didn't want you know to have a repeat uh, or over stamp another little snowflake. Now I'm creating another little mask real quick just for the bottom part of the deer head so that I can stamp a couple more of these snowflakes just because I wanted them to be evenly spaced out around the deer as well, not have blank spaces um, that would look, I don't know, more uneven than the randomly stamped out <laughs> snowflakes. Anyway, I wanted it just to look chock full of these little images of these little snowflakes and really tack it up. <laughs> um, I did one more there in the corner right by the armpit. And uh, now I'm going on to the next sweater. And this one, I am going to just mask off the bottom cuff of the sweater and stamp out this cute little penguin with all these Christmas lights tangled up in it, just peeking out over the lower right part of this uh, sweater. Now I'm gonna take this itty bitty penguin, it's so cute, and I'm just gonna stamp it all over this sweater. I'm just making sure not to over stamp the areas of the cuffs, but otherwise I'm gonna be stamping it, again, very randomly, twisting and turning so that the little penguin images, um, you know, are turned all in different directions. You see that I'm getting some into the arms, and I'm trying to get it so that the penguin hats, because I know that's gonna be colored red, is gonna be kind of evenly distributed around the sweater. I'm also making sure that I get some on the arms um, and in basically kind of filling in the sweater as much as I can without making it look um, too busy or over stamping accidentally, but making sure that it's a nice full pattern. I'm gonna also go back and take that mask that I had made for the prior um, collar, and I'm going to, oh, you see me actually here making a mask, making the mask. Um, I just stamped out the collar portion of the sweater onto a post-it note, and I'm placing that right there at the collar so that I can get that little penguin without over stamping around the collar. Now I'm going back and I'm gonna just simply Copic color this sweater. And I'm, I am sped this up pretty quickly. You can get all of the Copic colors that I used on my accompanying blog post, which I'll link to below. Uh, but basically, I just wanna make sure there's a little bit of shadowing, a little bit of highlighting, uh, but the image is so easy to color because it's a really simple image. And I'm gonna actually take more time and describe to you how I do the texture on the sweater, which is kind of more of a boucle. But this pattern sweater is so, so easy to color. I love that Maymay made it so um, kind of crisp, so you can just follow along, color in like you would if you were a little kid and not worry too much about shading. If you wanna add the shading like I'm doing here, you can. I've just decided to do go slightly darker at the top and the bottom of each of these stripes. Um, but you totally don't have to do that. The area is so small, you barely notice it. Um, I'm also making sure that the area where the neck cuff folds over is a little bit darker. It's a little bit darker at the top and at the bottom of that neck cuff. And now I'm just going in and putting in a base layer coloring of the entire background of the sweater. And whatever texture I plan to add to the sweater, getting that base color in is just Kind of the basic first step. You could stop it right here and it would be fine too, 
but I like to add a little bit more shadowing to a bigger area like the sweater. So I'm going in and I'm taking a slightly darker color. The background base was a B000, and this is a B00, and I'm just trying to kind of establish where some folds might be or some kind of waviness of the sweater might be. So I've done it under the collar, at the base of the sweater, under the arms, by the armpits. And now I'm going in with a third color. This is, I believe, a B02. Um, this is even darker, and I'm just adding dots everywhere where I think the dark kind of folds uh, would be, the valleys, as it were, of the sweater. And I'm putting in all these dots. I've sped this up to four times my normal speed so that you wouldn't hopefully get too bored. But basically, everywhere there are shadows, like in the um, crease of where the arm might be, that sort of thing, I'm putting in those dark dots. Now I went back one color, this is the lightest color, and I'm putting in more dots. And I don't know if you'll be able to see all of this in the video, but adding these light colored dots also adds a very subtle texture to the sweater. Now I'm going in and really simply coloring up this little deer's head, I'm just using the one E31 color, and I'm putting in a couple of coats just under the hat so that it gets a little bit of shadowing. And now I decided I needed more of that red in the sweater to echo the reindeer nose and the hat. So I'm going to alternate the aqua and what used to be white stripes with aqua and red stripes. And I'm adding just a teeny bit of shadowing with a slightly darker red. And that's at the top and the bottom of each of these little stripes. And that just adds a hint, a hint of shadowing and highlighting, uh, which you totally don't need to do. but I thought, for me, why not? I'm here. <laughs> so I'm actually using three different shades of red like I did on the little reindeer hat and on the nose. I just wanted them all to look the same kind of tone intensity. Now I'm gonna quickly just fussy cut out the sweater. And I have to thank Maymay again because she's made this image so crisp and the image line so thick that it's really easy to uh, fussy cut. Now I'm taking a Tuxedo Memento Black marker and I'm taking the felt tip side of it and just inking the edges of the paper. You can see that it has a white edge where you cut and inking up those edges with a marker really adds that finishing touch. Now I'm gonna color up the little penguin with the Christmas lights. This stamp set by Joy Claire is also available at Name Made It. It's called Christmas Penguins. And I just think this whole set is so stinking cute and really easy and fun to color up. So here I'm just randomly coloring up all of these uh, Christmas lights in a rainbow of colors, tacky as can be. And now I'm just gonna go uh, and simply color up the background sweater. And I'm gonna show you that process one more time of adding uh, a texture, a boucle kind of fuzzy sweater texture. And again, I start by just putting in that base light color and I'm using gray tones. This is a neutral gray. All of that end line is neutral. And I'm gonna just put in one base coat all over the background of the sweater. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna start adding the shadowing. So I start with the N1, fill in all of the background, and now I'm taking the next shade up that I wanna use, an N3, and I'm just using some flicking motions and adding in the shadows where I think they would be, kind of where the seam of the sweater, where the arm would meet the main torso part of the sweater, at the base of the cuffs, where the arms would be bent, uh, if someone were wearing the sweater, where the inside of the elbow is. And now I'm starting to add the dots. These are the darkest uh, dots for the sweater, I believe, and I'm using an N5. And right now it looks a little crazy. I'm <laughs> adding all these dots, uh, but I'm just trying to add most of the dots where the shadow uh, shadowing is. And occasionally I'll drop a dot here or there. This is really a forgiving process. You just wanna add enough so that you get the sense that the texture, that you know, the fuzzy, nubby look of a sweater uh, is added all around the sweater, but particularly where the shadows are. That's where you'd want the darkest dots. Now I'm going back in and adding the N3 dots. This is kind of the slightly darker than the base color, but mid-tone color of the neutral gray. And I'm adding lots of those dots, 
again, more in the areas that are shadowed, but this time also a little bit more where it's, uh, you know, the lightest color. Now I'm going back in with the lightest color, the N1, and going back in and adding dots all over. This time more in the areas that are light and less in the areas that are dark, but I'm adding the N1 dots even in the dark areas too because I want all of that texture to really show up. And I find that, you know, adding all of those three colors is a great way to do that. And now to add even higher lights um, or highlights <laughs> to the lightest areas, I'm using a blender, a colorless blender marker, a zero, and I'm going in and that basically pushes the pigment away. So it creates almost white, like the paper, uh, white dots to the sweater as well. And now I'm going in and I decide I'm gonna use a striped pattern of a medium gray and then an even darker gray for the striped cuffs at the base of the sweater, on the cuffs and at the collar. And I just wanna make sure that I alternate every other uh, stripe. And now I'm, I decided, oh, I want a little bit more of a dark color to kind of repeat the outline edges and the antlers of the little penguin. So I'm going in with an N9 for those darker stripes on the uh, details of the sweater. And I really like how that looks. All of this is, I think, gonna go on a monotone or a monochromatic kind of card. Uh, and it's the kind of color that I would normally wear. Now to add just kind of some extra fun and shine, I'm just putting small dots of glossy accents over top of all of the holiday lights. And I think that adds a really nice shine and a little dimension. I think these three Christmas cards came out so cute and I just am absolutely in love with this Ugly Sweater Weather stamp set by May May Made It because it is so versatile. Just as a little sneak peek and to let you know how versatile it is, I wanted to show you this little sweater that I have designed. I haven't yet colored it up, but this is so personalized to me because that's supposed to be my bandito and that is my biscuit. And I got these little pups from this Avery L stamp set. This is more furry friends. and. I mean, isn't that the most adorable sweater ever? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.